What's up, everybody? It's your boy, the Cowboy, J.R. Storm, and my buddy, J.K. Candell, coming at you with another episode of the J-Rock Show. J.K., we talking some good old-fashioned Big East basketball today, you know, and we got an exciting one in show for the people. Absolutely. I can't speak for you, JR. I've definitely enjoyed the return of SimWorld U football. I'm only going to get more excited for the return of SimWorld U basketball over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely, for sure. And getting started right off the rip here, we've got Butler. You know, a team who really struggled last season. You know, finished with a record of 11-19. and And to be honest, I don't see a lot of that changing at least in a huge way, this upcoming season. I think I would agree with that. There's definitely some intriguing pieces on the squad. Sean Chapman Daly, if you know anything about SimWorld Prep, you know about his tenure with the Indy Stripes. Bit of a um, local guy for Butler. But I really do... The guys I do like for this team are um, Umberton... Or, um, uh, excuse me, Christian Keys. And Umberto, and Umberto Dyson. Umberto Dyson. The junior and the ju- two juniors right there. Got Guys got some size in the front court. I think that Keyes at 235 pounds is going to be such a valuable asset for this Butler squad. The Big East is known for, for their physical play, so having two guys that are going to be 6'9 in your front court, that's great. But the fact that that is, that is your two tallest players on the roster, that is cause for concern. Yeah, definitely, J.K. And, you know, Butler, they definitely have some intriguing pieces. Like, you know, you mentioned Christian Kias being at the top of that list, you know, their most intriguing pieces. But I just don't see them finishing above the middle of the conference, you know. And honestly, more realistically, I see them as a bottom-of-the-league team. And now moving on to our next school, we've got... Greg McDermott's Creighton Blue Jays, you know, this is a team, you know, size is an issue as their three tallest players are all 6'7", and with nobody taller than that, but with the type of system that Greg McDermott likes to run, you know, fast-paced defensively, you know, with Ethan Letterman, you know, they're going to want to, they're going to open up a long-range, you know, offensive game i think they can make it work despite that you know size disadvantage they they'll have against certain teams i I do i agree to disagree i think that they're going to struggle with some of the some of these big east big men such as uh, camden lampkin with vcu but i really do like the i really do like mark chisholm he's great on the defensive side of the floor i him and ethan letterman have such a great rapport both on and off the court that's been a really enjoyable storyline to watch. And I think that this Quan Singleton, Ethan Letterman backcourt could end up doing some damage. I am a little bit concerned for about Creighton's lack of experience. Not a single senior, or only one senior on the roster. Actually, there are two seniors on the roster, I should say. But m- predominantly an inexperienced roster. A couple fresh freshmen, a couple sophomores, very all over the place. I think they're my biggest sleeper in this conference because I think that Chisholm and Letterman are going to be instant contributors, and I think they're going to be some of the best freshmen in the Big East. Yeah, yeah, without question. And to be honest, I see that backcourt of Quan Singleton and Ethan Letterman being one of the more underrated in all of SimWorld U when when the season is said and done, you know, this upcoming season. And um, moving on, we've got the Georgetown Hoyas. A team who also struggled last season. They finished last in the Big East with a record of 9-22. and They don't have a lot of experience, but they do have a very interesting recruiting class. They bring in one of the best defensive bigs, you know, in, on the entire recruiting cycle in JoJo Kearney. They bring in a guy like Jay Laster who's got so much offensive potential and versatility. Josiah Mulkey, a, you know, smooth shooting forward. And then Keith Singleton to sort of help round out that backcourt. You know, what do you like about this Georgetown team? There's a lot to like about this Georgetown team, but I'm going to start with the culture 
that Ed Cooley is bringing down to the District of Columbia. I really do like the pickup of Keith Singleton. He really knows what to do with the ball in his hands from his run DMV days. No stranger to the area. Singleton really had a couple games last season where he took over late ga- late in games. And if he can bring that to Georgetown, then I think he can be one of the most underrated scoring guards in the entire country. And I really do like the other two freshmen they brought in, Jay Laster and JoJo Kearney. Laster was buried on the depth chart during his Simwell prep career, but now in an expanded role, I think he could surprise some people. And JoJo Kearney could be the heart and soul of this team as a freshman, the biggest guy on the, on the squad in terms of both weight and height. And Ed Cooley's going to love a guy like that who's physical, going to be going to be imposing down low. I think it, we can see Georgetown uh, being another one of those squads that will that will make their presence felt quickly. Kearney is reported to not be starting for the squad day one. Atlee Backman is. But I think we will see Kearney starting sooner rather than later down for the Hoyas. However, Nick Bonato, and Nick Donato, excuse me, despite being 5'6", that kid can, sh- can shoot it. Love that bench piece for them. Yeah, definitely. You know, they're definitely going to need, you know, they have, you know, obviously some key defenders that you can build around on that side of the floor. And, you know, a potential All-American, you know, in Atlee Backman. So with Donato, you know, bringing that... Really? Potential All-American? I think Atlee Backman could be a potential All-American. I think he could. Interesting. Nick Donato, you know... I don't... He's going to bring a scoring punch off the bench. You know, you're definitely going to need that. And I think before the season is over, we could see Georgetown running Backman and Kearney, you know, both in the starting five and having one of the more imposing front courts in all of SimWorld U. I agree with that. Georgetown won nine games last year, finished last in the conference. I expect a big turnaround. I definitely... Maybe not a full 180, but more of like a 270. Shout out, Marsh, for that one. Yeah, definitely. I... I do see Georgetown turning it around to an extent this season. I've been very high on them, you know, especially with this recruiting class they have coming in. But also, you know, outside of Backman and Donato, not a lot of experience. You know, only one senior in Backman and one junior in Donato and the rest being freshmen and sophomores. So that might come into play and hurt them a bit. So Georgetown, I could see them, you know, setting the world on fire this season if they can get it going offensively. But I could also see them being more of a next year type of team after another year of experience. Yeah. I think it's... I think they're a year away from being a year away. Although, if they do end up managing to crack their way into Hoopsteria, I would not be surprised. Yeah, I think the Big East has, you know, several teams that which more we'll get to that could end up finding themselves, you know, cracking Hoopsteria. And moving on to our next school, we've got the Mark... We've got Marquette. From Golden Eagles. Now, what stands out... I saw Simworld today this morning. I saw Simworld today this morning. I I saw our good friend of this show, Biron, saying that he thinks that Marquette's a big sleeper. I am... Somewhat in agreement, because I think that this team is a top three team in the conference, and I think that calling them a sleeper to win it all is not that bold. Alex Rodriguez and Lucas Banks were incredible to sim world prep ranks, and I think A.J. Blaylock could even forge out a decent role for himself as a freshman. But looking at uh, Marcus Leifa Leifa in going into his second season, I think the duo of Leifa and Banks potentially in that backcourt, dangerous. I think if Marquette wins, wins the Big East, do not be surprised. I know a lot of people are talking about UConn. I know there's a lot of talk about Villanova, a lot of talk about Creighton even. I think that Marquette could be better than all of those teams. Yeah, Marquette, I think, definitely has a legitimate shot at contending, you know, in the Big East. One other piece, you know, that they brought in, Alex Rodriguez, who, you know, has sort of struggled in practice, you know, all reports have indicated that he's been struggling in practice, you know, with shot selection 
and whatnot. So if he can kind of get, he'll be fine. He'll get it together. Yeah, if he can, he'll get, be fine. If he can get that under wraps, you know, I think Shaka Smart has a team with a lot of depth. You know, guys that are able to score the ball, and you know, you get like AJ Blaylock, one of the more underrated defenders. I believe, in all of SimWorld prep, you know, this past season. So Marquette, definitely a school to keep your eye on. However, what's going to hold Marquette back? Lack of experience. Tyshawn Vice, only upperclassman on the roster. Yeah, def- that could very well end up coming into play at times, but when you compare them to, yeah. like, a Georgetown, you know, who another team in the Big East who kind of lacks experience. You stack them up talent for talent against each other. On paper, and you know, visually for me, Marquette's got more, you know, all-around solid talent. So I think they're more of a team that could do some damage this year, or I think that has a more likely chance of doing so than a Georgetown, although it is very possible for both. I would agree. However, I think that the lack of experience is going to come into play once we get closer to hoop stereo. And that's why I'm not bullish on them as title contenders. I'm bullish on them as Big East contenders. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah, definitely. Big East is... The Big East is going to be extremely extremely tough this season and now moving on to Seton Hall you know led by you know former alums Shaheen Holloway who we all know a couple years back led St. Peter's on that miraculous run to the Elite Eight. Seton Hall another team very interesting to me they have a little bit of size you know fairly you know Tall, you know, in every aspect. You know, they've got some taller guards at like 6'5 and 6'2 being their sh- shortest. But it's just a very interesting team to me. And I just can't quite put my finger on it. I like that they have size. They have two guys that are 6'10. Their front court's got good size. Munir Bland is the only freshman on the roster. I think if even if he puts on a little bit of weight, I think they'll be great. I think what stands out to me about Seton Hall is reports have really indicated that this could be one of the best shooting teams in all of SimWorld U. It's going to run through Tyshawn Housie, 6'10", 258, is a junior, is really, really mobile with that size. And the way he moves at near, near 260 pounds is absurd to me. But I want to talk about some of, some of these deft guys, the Eric, the Eric Busks of the world. The righteous Lamperts of the world. You know why? Because I think that these are guys that are going to be really key pieces of Seton Hall squad. And if they can shoot the rock the way that reports are indicating they have been in practice, I think I could see Hoopsteria in their future. They can keep. They can. They can hang in a game with anybody if they can shoot that well. It's that simple. Yeah, with threes are greater than twos. You don't got it. You don't. I graduated fifth grade math. I think we all know that. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. And uh, but yeah, very. Jerry's still out for, on me for that one. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Seton Hall. You know, if I had to give you a sleeper team in the Big East right now, from my perspective, I'd have to go with Seton Hall. Honestly, you know, like you said, all reports coming out, you know, from insiders have been indicated that offensively the team has looked really, really efficient in practice. And I don't know. There's just something interesting to me in a good way that stands out to them that, I, like I said, I can't quite put my finger on. But to me, they are definitely my sleeper team in the Big East. I think it's time to move on, though. Talking to the next, talking about the team that the Big East, one of the more polarizing teams in all of Sim World U. They lost in the first round of Big East play a season ago. Now they return with some really intriguing pieces in play. Che King, he's returning to Sim World U for his junior season. And then we, and then Elijah Morrell and Jared Quinney look to be 
a very, very strong foundation for the squad here for Rick Pitino. Pitino has a penchant for winning, especially in March. We saw what he did, did at Louisville. We saw what he did even the SWBA. He's one of the better developmental coaches. Guys want to play for him. But I think Che King, he's trying to put himself put himself even further on scouts' radars. Right now, he's expected to be a, lot, a lottery pick in the upcoming SWBA draft. I think this season he establishes himself as a top seven player in the country. Will be one of the most sought-after players in all of Sim World U. Yeah, without... For what he can bring to an SWBA roster. And I really like Jared Quinney, 6'6", sophomore, has experience. Though, Elijah Burrell at 5'11", would love to see a little bit more development out of him this season. Need to see him put up, put on some weight at 5'11", 176. This team definitely needs to hit the gym, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. And, you know, St. John's, you know, a program with, you know, a lot of history, you know, have struggled, you know, over the last, you know, 10 to 15, even 20 years. But I have always said this, you know, when it comes time to, you know, especially it comes time for Hoopsteria, you know, I will never bet against a team that is coached by Rick Pitino. I will never bet against a Rick Pitino coached team, especially when it gets later in the season. I agree, but for a different reason. I'm not betting on Rick Pitino. I'm betting on Che King. And I think that this team's lack of size, they have a lot of guys that have some size, but it's like 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, they don't really have anybody that's really going to be physically, that super physically imposing down low for the Red Storm, and that's my biggest concern with them. Yeah, I definitely could see that coming into play at some point during, you know, the season. But, I don't know. St. John's another team that just, very interesting the way they're constructed, you know. Especially without not having any freshmen, you know. But they do have a lot of experience. Definitely a team that I could see at least middle of the pack, if not maybe squeaking into hoopsteria. I'm not necessarily saying they win the Big East or have it, you know, I put them as a top contender in conference play, but I could see them, you know, potentially cracking hoopsteria when it comes that time of the season. And now moving on, we have Dan Hurley and the Yukon Huskies. JK runner ups from last year. Yeah. You know, so much intrigue, but they lost so much talent. They lost Donovan Klingon to the SWBA. They lost Cam Spencer to the SWBA. They lost Alex Caravan to the SWBA. They lost Stefan Castle to the SWBA. They lost Tristan Newton to the SWBA. They lost pretty much that entire roster to the SWBA. So... When we saw Dan Hurley almost depart for that Lakers job, it's because that this roster is pretty much starting pretty much exactly from scratch. But I really like the way that this squad is headed. I really like Fareed Redman. Definitely. He showed a lot of potential in his freshman season. And now sharing the backcourt with Lakeshore Drive's own Norman Nations. Norman Nations, he can shoot the rock. He's a scorer. I'm, he was kind of that second fiddle behind D'Angelo Jordan for Lakeshore. I'm super excited to see what he can do in more of a leading role in this UConn offense. And I will have to bring up Malcolm Oliver, a 7'1", 237-pound big man. It's going to be his job to replace Donovan Klingon. That's scary. Yeah, definitely. And kind of going back to Norman Nations, you know, he's not just a guard to me that can score the ball. He has the ability to fill out an entire stat sheet. You know... He averaged, I can't recall, I think it was 13 to 15 points a game. But, you know, had plenty of nights where he was scoring like 17, you know, 20 points. He has the ability to be an 18 to 20 points per game type player. But he brings it all to the court. I agree. I really liked what I saw from Norman Nations. I got to call the Lakeshore Beast of the East game where... 
Lakeshore nearly broke the Sim World Prep scoring record. Shout out Siege for being on the on that call with me. But what really stood out to me in that game was no, the way Norman Nations conducted himself. I'm not surprised he got an offer from, from a school like UConn because this feels like a guy that would absolutely thrive in a Dan Hurley system. Reminds me a lot of Cam Spencer. Yeah, without question, he definitely. But with a lot more upside. Yeah, Norman Nations, you know, and he's got size for a guard too. You know, standing at six foot four, potentially with room to grow. And we've got another. We've got a few more teams to talk about here. First, we've got VCU, a team you know with Kent, one of the bigger guys in the conference in Camden Lampkin, seven one two forty six, a senior out of Washington D.C. They have a little bit of size, but I'm just not sold on this team, J.K. Why is that? Why is that, Jr.? I don't... I just... You know what Camden Lampkin will bring to the floor. And yes, they have experience, but... I just think the Big E, you know, VCU could surprise a lot of people. You know, they're a program that has had, you know, some success, you know, in postseason play. But I just, there's too many teams I put ahead of them, you know, honestly, in the Big East for me to be exceptionally sold on them. I think there is that much talent, you know, in the conference. I, this is a much stronger conference than people realize. The only teams that I really don't think are that impressive are Butler and, like, like that's really it. I think every other team in this conference has some sort of perk to what they're building. Butler just feels like they're a year or two out. But we're not talking about Butler right now. We're talking about VCU. I like Jahi Hobson. I think that he is going to end up being a first-round pick in the upcoming SWBA draft. Maverick Jackson-Jones going in his sophomore year. I really like what he can bring this VCU squad out of the backcourt. And I really, and Camden Lampkin, that's a beast. Like, that is a matchup nightmare for the rest of the Big East. And I feel like that's a kind of a very hard guy to take away. You got a guy like Devontae Leggett. You got guys like Andre Stoltz. This team has so much experience. Not a single freshman on the roster. A lot of seniors might be hitting the drawing board after the year. I think VCU could very well sneak into Hoopsteria, but I understand your concerns because there is so much unknown and so much strength in this conference. Yeah, without question. And it's not like we're saying the Big East is, you know, just top-heavy with, say, maybe three or four good teams. You know, out of the ten teams in the conference... I wouldn't be surprised. Everyone's pretty solid. Yeah, and it wouldn't. Su- Butler is really the only team that it would truly surprise me seeing them make it to Hoopsteria. And I think that. And yeah, I will say, you know, Georgetown. Honestly, that would be Georgetown's probably next on that list for me in terms of teams that it would, you know, give me the most shock to see make it to Hoopsteria. But I like, when you compare Georgetown to Butler, I know kind of going back a bit here, Georgetown, I think, definitely has the more talented roster. But kind of swinging back to uh, VCU here, very, you know, talented roster, you know, two SWBA players, potential SWBA players in Jahi Jahi Hobson, excuse me, and Camden Lampkin. But this conference is just so deep in talent, like, you know, you also alluded to. And now, moving on to one of the more storied and recently successful teams in the Big East. We've got Villanova. The Wildcats brought in one of the most underrated recruiting classes in all of SimWorld U, I think. You know, bringing in one of the more versatile forwards... At least he was in all of Sim World Prep the past two seasons in Justin Bell, and also bringing in a 7 1 Mugen Williams. I love the Justin Bell pickup. I I would not be surprised whatsoever if he ends up being the best. 
I'll say a top three freshman in the country. Because I think the only two where I think I think they will for sure be better are Cooper Flag and maybe Kevon Jackson. What about D'Angelo Jordan? D'Angelo Jordan's up there too. But Justin Bell, I'm so high on his game. He has such a silky, pure offensive game that I think will translate so well to the Sim World U, and I think that this kid is such a bright has such a bright future. I think he'll be an SWBA lottery pick. I know there have been some concerns about Justin Bell in Villanova practice, but I think he'll get it together. It's his first couple of weeks at the Sim World U level, and don't be surprised to see him average, I'd say even over 15 points per game this upcoming season. I really love the pickup of Mugen Williams, 7 one for this Villanova squad. Kyle Neptune's job is on the line if Villanova isn't good that this season. And now they have two seven-footers right now, the twin towers of Aaron, uh, Aaron Lovejoy and Mugen Williams. And then you don't have a single person below six feet, six one even. If Villanova's backcourt can step up, I think they can win this conference. Yeah, without question. And Aaron Lovejoy, you know, a player who I've been high on, you know, had, you know, a respectful season last year. I would like to see him put on a little more weight, you know, only 199 for being 7 feet tall, so he's kind of able to throw himself around down low a little bit better. But um, to wrap up the show today, our last school, we've got the defending Big East champions in Xavier, I'll let you field this one to sort of wrap things up today, JK. I know we talk a lot about the big men play in this conference and how important it is to have a physical, hard-nosed roster. That's what Sean Miller does. That's what Sean Miller brings to Xavier. He was a decent coach at Arizona. He's really kind of coming to his own here at Xavier. I really like Millen McAbee. In his senior season, I think him and Lampkin are probably going to battle for the... Them and Lovejoy, I would say, are probably the three best big men in this conference. And I think McAbee will be such an important part of I, of what I, of a Xavier team that is looking to go back-to-back in this conference. But we can't ignore DeMarco Nesbitt. Really showed a lot of flashes of his potential as a freshman. See, um, Cesar Castaneda. Got to talk about Cornelius Leverette. There's definitely some size there. Braylon Burleson. This is an experienced squad. Another team that only has one freshman coming in. I really like Tyreek Mooney. I really like Lamarian Traver. This Xavier squad is going to be difficult for people to handle in this conference. They won the conference a season ago, and now they even ha- have another season of experience under their belt. I think they're good. I don't think they're going to win the conference this year, though. I'm just too high on what UConn's building. For me to for me to commit to thinking Xavier is going to win this conference. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I do think it is possible for them to repeat. Do I see it happening? I'm going to say no, but I do see them making hoopsteria yet again. I do see that as a very high seed, I, I presume. Yeah, I would say a I'll say as high as a top or a 1 through 5 seed. I think within that 1-5 to range in any of the regions, I could see them sort of being in there. I think that's a great take. I think Millen Maccabee is going to prove a lot of people wrong this season. A lot of people have kind of overlooked Xavier for not having the name value of a Villanova or even a UConn in this conference, but they are not to be messed with. They made the Elite Eight a season ago. Can they get over the hump and reach the and reach the quad? That's my question. Yeah, that is the big. That is one of the bigger questions I think in the Big East Conference. Yet, and as we've said multiple times today, so much depth all throughout this conference in terms of talent wouldn't be a surprise really for all but two teams. I think I'll I'll say Butler. And maybe Georgetown. The only two schools in this conference who it would truly shock me to see win it. But that's all the time we have for the show today. JK, it was a pleasure having you in the booth yet again, man. 
I appreciate that. Thank you for having me on. Next week, we are going over the Mountain West. So get so get your Coors Lights, or don't, because we can't. <laughs> and enjoy our next episode next week. Yeah, everyone, drop it down in the comments below. You know, what you think or what you're most excited for about the Big East Conference or the SimWorld U season in general. Thank you all for tuning in. And as always, SimWorld is the only place where you can see the game, be the game. Uh-huh.